By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an X-Points match in X-Points finals, finals number 41, I believe. My, 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 they've come a long way. Um, and maybe you're wondering, what's the 41 number about? Well, each month they have an online tournament and every month ends with the final and that final gets a number, of course. So this is edition 41. So they've had 41 months of old school X points. That's pretty impressive. Um, if you want to join their community, check out the description below because there you can find a link to their Facebook page. Joining is completely free. Playing is completely free. And the community is great. So if you like X, X points, this is definitely the place for you to be. Um, talking about X points, it's um, what that means is that they're playing according to the Atlantic rules, meaning there's Fallen Empires, one strip mine, and mana burn. But also there's a list with cards that have points allocated to them. Here you can see that list and you can spend X points in total, X being the Roman numeral for 10. So you can spend 10 points in total when you're constructing your deck. Okay, so that um, will create a more balanced playing field. I think that is the idea behind the list. And in today's finals, we have a boss, Beastie Boss, who's playing Troll Disco. He's called it Surging Trolls. And uh, actually, that makes sense. It's more Surging Trolls than Troll Disco. I'm now looking at the deck photo. I'm going to show the deck photo to you in a minute, by the way. Don't worry. Worry, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. He's taking on John, John Dittert. So both of these are, are pretty veterans in the X-Point scene, by the way. And uh, John Dittert is playing a black, red, mid-range, a deck that we've seen quite a lot in X-Points. I haven't seen it in the finals in quite a while, so it's kind of nice to see it. Uh, making a comeback here in the finals. It's red and black. It's got four hymns. It's got the set trolls. So both players are playing with set trolls today. Um, so yeah, it's but it's it's far from a mirror match though. There are some similarities, but it's far from a, a mirror match. Now before I dive into uh, the deck text, I first would like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the matches, check out the deck text later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, It'll take you straight to the game action. And in that description below, you will also find a link to my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash timmytalks. And there you can find out how you can support the channel. So uh, it's thanks to patrons like Boss and like John that I can keep uh, the lights on here at the studio, which I don't have. I just record from home. <laughs> but it would be nice to have a studio in the future, by the way. Anyway, uh, if you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a patron and support the show that way. Check out Patreon dot com slash timmy talks okay and now that that's all out of the way we're going to start with the deck decks i'm going to start with the deck of beastie boss and surging trolls too let's have a look and here we see the deck of beastie boss so it's called surging trolls named after of course the often trolls the set trolls and the power surge i'm really liking this combination between power surge and the trolls it's super cool maybe power surge is kind of the the, the starting point for this deck tech uh, power surge is an enchantment for two red that reads, I'm just gonna read the current Oracle text. It reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Search deals X damage to that player where X is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. So in other words, you wanna make sure that you tap out with Power Search. You don't wanna start your turn with untapped lands because then you're gonna get uh, punished for it. So you need mana sinks. Now he's got several mana sinks in his deck. The best one, I guess, is Mishra's Factory, because just for one colorless, you can make it a 2-2 assembly worker, and you can do that as often as you want. So all your mana can be synced into there, so you don't take any mana burn. Um, then the next best thing is, I guess, the Often Troll for one red regeneration, the Setch Troll for one green, uh, sorry, one black regeneration, and you can regenerate a creature as often as you want. You can do it once, you can also do it 10 times, doesn't matter, and they're called regeneration shields these days. And then you also have Granite Gargoyle, another great mana sink, one red plus O plus one. Again, you can do that as often as you want. You could even consider using Greed as a mana sink, but of course it's going to be costly because one black with Greed pay two life, draw a card. So if you have the choice between taking one life from your own power search for your black, untapped black mana or tap the black mana, pay one more life than one, that is two, but also draw a card, it's pretty easy, right, to, to make that decision. So um, yeah, that's kind of the strategy. But of course, with the trolls comes the Nevenerals discs, right? They almost always come hand in hand. And maybe you think, well, Nevenerals disc and power search, isn't that a non-bow? A little bit. On the other hand, you can also see Nevenerals Disc as its safety button 
that whenever things get out of hand, it may be for whatever reason you cannot control the lands and you, you just end up with a lot of untapped lands, the power surge starts to work against you. You can press that button, uh, you know, you can crack the glass and you can destroy everything on the board with your Neverneural's Disc. So Neverneural's Disc, an artifact for four, comes into play tap. When you untapped, you can pay one, sacrifice, the, um, well, not sacrifice the disc, actually, you pay one, then it destroys all the creatures, all the artifacts and all the enchantments. And because Nevneural's Disc is an artifact, it also destroys itself. Um, now, the cool thing is it says destroy, meaning regeneration works. So you can regenerate your trolls. They survive the explosion of the disc. And then you have creatures and your opponent doesn't, right? If everything goes according to plan and you can start attacking next turn. So that's, uh, that's uh, basically what this deck wants to do. Now, the thing is his opponent is also playing with, I believe, Navneural's Disc. So I wonder if the disc plan is gonna work out for Boss here in this uh, match. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the black and red deck of John Dittert. Now, this is really a classic, I feel, in X points. This deck has been doing quite well since the start of the format. Uh, and that's not a surprise because black and red are some of the strongest spells and creatures. We see for him to Turax, uh, of course, four lightning bolts. So, I mean, those spells alone make it worth to play red and black. And then, of course, it has some really strong creatures, four hypnotic specters, four set trolls. And what I like is he's also playing with the Kumbach witches, four of those. Kumbach witches is um, an one three creature from Arabian Nights for two black. You can tap it. It deals one damage to any target. And then you also take one damage in return. So it's really good against those weenie strategies like mono green, mono white, uh, a lot of aggressive decks, you know, it can just be perfect when you have those matchups. Um, and then he's also playing, which I think is super cool, John, Demonic Hordes. I love it, man. I hope so much that we're going to see Demonic Hordes in action. This is a 5-5 five, five, and you can tap it to uh, destroy target land. Now, it does have an upkeep cost, I believe, of 3 black. I think, I think it was 3. If you cannot pay the 3 black during your upkeep, it taps itself and your opponent gets to destroy a land on your side. Now, the cool thing is because of the new rules with magic, if you're forced to tap it in response, you can already tap your um, your demonic hordes and you can also destroy a land on the side of your opponent. So at least you get a little bit of value. Your opponent can still destroy a land on your side as well, but you can also destroy a land on the side of your opponent. So it's kind of like an even point when you cannot pay the upkeep cost so it's not it used to be worse it used to be you couldn't do anything else and you would just lose a land if you couldn't pay the upkeep but now at least you can still destroy a land on the other side of the table as well um yeah and what else is there to say about this deck it's 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 just a good deck like i said uh john is also playing with navneural's discs he's playing two in total uh which of course is the thing is of course with with uh black and red certain problems you cannot solve and that is why it's always good to have at least one uh, disc in these decks, or maybe even two, like John is doing, uh, because you need to solve your problems. You know, it's just a reset button. If you cannot get rid of that key enchantment of your opponent, then, you know, the disc can uh, can be your only way out in those situations. So I really understand that he's playing with the disc. And of course, the Chaos Orb, that's also a great tool to uh, destroy anything on the board that you cannot really take care of with the colors black and red. Okay, we've discussed uh, the deck of John. We looked at the deck of Bus. That only means one thing. We are ready for the finals. Finals number 41 of X points. Let's go. Game number one here is about to be in the X points final 41 between Bus, who's on Surging Trolls, a deck uh, with Power Surge and Trolls in it. He's taking on John Dittert and he's playing Black Red Midrange. So, uh, two decks that have some similarities. For example, both players playing with Setch Trolls and both players playing with Nevenerals Discs. John is playing with two. And look at that, a uh, Mulligan here by Bus, who's on the draw. John's starting here with a Bad Lance. So both players have discs, but uh, I would definitely say that boss strategy is more built around the discs. He's playing with four and John only with two. And both players playing a full play set of Setch Trolls. But there's also a lot of difference, uh, differences between the decks. For example, Kumbach Witches. John is playing a full play set of those. One three creature from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to deal one damage to any target. And then your opponent can deal one damage back to any target as well. Really good against those uh, early aggro decks like Green Stompy, and here we see uh, Boss playing a duel, passing the turn. No red mana for Boss, which is quite concerning. His deck is mainly red. He really needs red mana. All his creatures are red as well. Here we see a Mistress Factory being dropped by uh, John. So Boss is playing Often Troll, Setch Troll, and uh, Granite Gargoyles. Finally finding a red source here in the form of a Badlands. 
Tapping three, okay, there we see the Granite Gargoyle 2-2 two, two Flyer, and for one red, you can give it plus O plus zero. Quick Lightning Bolt. And uh, that's understandable here, John taking care of that creature. Now we can also attack with the Factory if he wants to, because Boss is tapped out, so no risk for him attacking for three. You can see the life totals there in the uh, corner of the screen. Boss is now on 16, and John's still on 20. And boss uh, tapping three here. What's he going to do? Another. No, and Setch Troll. I want to say another Granite Gargoyle, but it is a Setch Troll hitting the board. A 3-3 three, three creature. Again, a quick. Uh, is that a Lightning Bolt? Oh, a Terror. That's a Terror. And Terror, of course, being the ideal answer to these regeneration creatures. And there's again the animation. So attacking here. And uh, Boss dropping to 13 already, and John just passing the turn. Looks like he's got a handful of answers, which is quite handy to take care of the creature threats of Boss. And Boss still having only one red source, which is a little bit tricky. For example, if he's got an often troll, he can choose to play it, but he then doesn't have the mana to regenerate it if John responds with a lightning bolt. Ooh, Boss untapping again. It looked like he wanted to tap four to play something. And this is the thing as well, like, of course, he doesn't have two right now for Power Surge, but even if he did, John having that Mistress Factory can uh, just put all the mana into the factory. This is actually quite nice for boss, not ideal, but there's the Nevenerals Disc. Are we going to see a Shatter? No, we're not. John here just drawing the card for turn. The reason it's not ideal is because the uh, Disc will only take care of the Kumbach Witches, but the factory will, of course, survive. And Boss now on 10, and he is playing the Shatter. And passing the turn, so really wants to keep his Kumbach Witches around. Also knowing, of course, that then Boss can keep the uh, disc up starting next turn, and that would mean that John probably wouldn't animate his factory anymore, so this way at least he can just keep uh, attacking with that factory. Boss here tapping the red. There's a Chain Lightning taking care of the Kumbach Witches. And the thing with Chain Lightning, that's why, I mean, I'm not a really big fan of the card. It's a sorcery, so you cannot take care of those factories if uh, your opponent uses them to attack with the factories. Because you cannot cast, of course, a sorcery uh, in the turn of your opponent. And I wonder if he's going to animate. It's pretty safe because John doesn't have red mana open. Nope, he's going to tap three for a Setch Troll. And wants to probably keep black mana open to regenerate the Setch. So choosing not to deal two damage, but instead go for a little bit of a safer route. Which I think makes sense because now you're sure that you can keep the uh, Setch Troll around. It's a 3-3 because he has swamps, so you can start attacking with that as well next turn. Boss on 10, John's still on 20. And yeah, this is difficult for Boss because a disc really doesn't do anything at the moment on this board, and that's that's its best like tool to destroy things. Doesn't play with Swords to Plowshares. Plays with a little bit of white. But uh, that's mainly in the sideboard. Probably one of the best cards he could play right now is a set troll of his own. Because he has enough mana to also keep a regeneration shield up. And that will allow him to block the Setch of John. And then, of course, John is not going to attack with the factory if there is a Setch draw on the other side. But Boss really in the tank here, trying to find a way out, knowing that uh, it's not looking great for him. But it's not over yet, still on 10. Four cards in hand, it seems. Three cards in hand for John. Yeah, Boss really taking his time here. Okay, he's going to play something. Okay, that's the often troll. And yeah, this is not ideal. But uh, you have to do what you have to. At least you could potentially trade with the factory or just take five now. And next turn you have regeneration uh, options open. The thing for, for Boss that he's really been struggling with here is his red mana sources. 
Took him quite a while to find that Badlands, and still he only has one red source. I mean, if John can find a sinkhole for the Badlands, that would be really good for him. I'm expecting him to actually attack here with the factory and the sedge, because Boss cannot regenerate this, the, uh, the often troll yet. Okay, here we see a terror, so taking care of the often troll. There's the animation. So going in for five, halving the life total of Boss. Yeah, this is an interesting decision, right, by John to go very aggressive here. Another line could have been to just animate and attack, keep your terror for maybe a sedge. Then again, if Boss would have had the sedge troll, he would have played it out already. So I think uh, John also realizes that. Of course, could have top decked it right now. Gonna tap a red in two. Okay, there's a granite gargoyle. And again, the problem here for Boss is that lack of red. If he would have had more red mana, it would have put him in a lot better position. And I'm expecting uh, John just to animate the factory now, offering the trade. Because, I mean, you know, boss is so low. Four cards in hand for John. Let's see what uh, he's going to do. Counting the mana. Tapping two red here. Are we going to see another terror? Untapping. Sinkhole is another card he could play. Okay, there's Chaos Orb, so he could flip here, actually. And then he can win the game, right? If he hits this flip, I think he wins the game. Let's go. Oh, is it a hit? It's a miss. I think it's a miss. It's a miss here, so this is vital. But John is, of course, still in a very good position. But this is really good news for Boss. At least he gets one more turn. And now it's up to John to decide, do I want to offer him the trade? I think it's still a good, good decision. Although, although I have to say, if you, of course, use that mana to animate the factory, you don't no longer have the regeneration mana open. So it could be risky. You could get yourself into a scenario where he trades for the factory and then next turn plays a chain lightning on your set, for example, and then you cannot regenerate. So going for a bit of a safer play here, just attacking with the 3-3. Three, three. Had, of course, expected the Chaos Orb to hit and then be able to attack for, for lethal, but it's not the case. Now it's up to boss uh, to make a decision. Could consider just taking the damage, gonna go to two or chump block. Looks like he's taking the damage. Yeah, dropping down to two. There's the City of Brass in the pass. So this is quite interesting, right? The City of Brass. I think in John's situation, because he still had that land to play out, I would have attacked with the factory as well, I think. Anyway, Boss not doing anything here, just passing the turn. So let's hope for him that he's got some instant action going. I would now definitely, uh, exactly, just... Animate, because he's on two, so he has to, he's actually dead here unless he's got an answer to at least one of the two creatures. Okay, there's the lightning bolt on the set, he regenerates, and then he trades for the factory. Again, the problem here for Buss is that he doesn't have a lot of red, but he fights to live another day. So he gets another turn, let's see what he can do. It really feels like he's uh, playing on borrowed time here. At least now he only has one creature to deal with instead of two, so that kind of helps. There's another chump blocker here. Passing the turn. So there's the attack. Has to chump because he's on two. Exactly, going to lose the gargoyle. And there's an hypnotic specter. Yeah, it's looking very, very bad for Boss. Needs to find a way to deal with two creatures now. Two, one of them flying, one of them having regeneration. So not the easiest task. Tapping three. Oh, Fireball. Okay, but that only takes care of one. Yeah, Boss picking up the cards. Realizing that game number one here is going to John. Now both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here is about to begin. A bus on the play, of course, after losing that first game, starting with a Mishra's Factory. Passing the turn to John. Let's see what John can do. Starting with one of those uh, 
Fallen Empire is tapped lands. This is the black version. Comes into play tapped. When it's untapped, you can tap it for a black or tap and sack it for two black. Quite handy lands. And uh, now it's Buss's turn. Let's see if we can find the land, animate the factory, swing in. Swing in for two here. John dropping to 18. And there we see Buss also resetting his life total back to 20. Five cards in hand, passing the turn to John. Let's see if John can find his Kumbach Witches, playing with a full play set of those. There's another black, so having the two black now to cast it. And the Kumbach Witches was pretty decent in, uh, in that first game. I think the three toughness also makes it a, a really useful card. Can block quite a lot, can block a factory, can block an often troll. Can block a Savannah Lion, of course. Ooh, here we see a sinkhole. Taking care of the factory, passing the turn. Let's see if that really sets Boss uh, back a lot. Of course, one land, so it's a good tempo play, but what else? There we see a scrub land. Again, not a lot of uh, red mana here. There's a Demonic Tutor by Boss. So that's uh, one of the cards in his deck that has points allocated to it. Also the Mistress Factory, by the way, also a pointed card. Remem remember, this is the X points format, meaning that if you build a deck, you have to look at the X points list with cards that have points allocated to them, and you cannot spend more than 10 points when building your deck. And it looks like Boss here has made his choice, shuffling up probably outside of the screen. And passing the turn here back to John. And like I said uh, in the introduction, both these players are uh, veterans here, and X points played a lot. And also have made it to the finals a lot of times. Here we see John playing a mountain. Oh, there's a hymn to Turek. Yeah, and this hymn is really well timed, of course, after that demonic tutor. And remember, him is discard at random. That's one of the things why the card is so sick. Yes, it's already a two for one, but that at random clause makes it even better. Because now Bus, of course, has the risk. Oh, look at this, he's making a mess. But now Bus, of course, has the risk of losing the card that he just picked up with the demonic tutor. And has to shuffle again. Every day we're shuffling. Making the piles, putting it all back together. And uh, now he's got to shuffle his hand. And then it looks like John is going to roll a die here to decide uh, what cards he's going to take out, making it as random as possible. There we go. A five, card five in card number one. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, that's the Badlands and a troll. What if that Badlands was his only source of red mana? That would be absolutely horrible for Boss if that's the case. Okay, he does have a plateau. So that's something. And what I really notice about these games is that the power search isn't doing much here for Boss. Didn't see it at all in game one. We're not seeing it here in game two. John playing another swamp. Let's see what he can do for four. He's playing also exactly with Hypnotic Spectre, so playing uh, the Hippie here, 2-2 two, two Flyer, and when it deals combat damage, your opponent has to discard a card at random. And I mean, Boss really needs just a Lightning Bolt, exactly, or a Chain Lightning, but just you need to take care of the Hypnotic Spectre. If you can't, it's almost a loss. So there's the pass here, back to John. Four cards in hand for Boss, still on 20. And John uh, on 18, playing a Setch Troll, keeping a black open to regenerate if need be. There's a Terror. Yeah, Terror is a perfect answer for these type of creatures. And there's another red source in the form of a second Plateau. Gonna tap three here. Keep the Scrubland open. There's a Setch. So now it's looking a little bit better for Boss. He's got a Setch Troll. John doesn't. I believe John is also playing with terrors in his deck, so if he can find one, he can take care of the Sedge of Bus. And of course, in these, uh, these top decks, you always have a lot of answers to creature threats. You kind of have to, X points being a pretty creature heavy format. And that is personally one of the things that I like about the format that there's just a lot of creatures. I enjoy combat. Ooh, there's a sack. Ooh, a Sengir Vampire. And what I really like here, you can see that added value 
of the sack lands, right? He's gonna sack it. That gives him the possibility to cast the Sengir Vampire 4 4 Flyer, which is, of course, a great blocker here for the Setch. Although, if Bus, for example, has a chain or a bolt, he can attack with the Setch. Exactly, he's gonna attack now, kind of signaling that he's got a bolt. So, John actually taking the damage, deciding not to take the bait. And oh, there's a Nevenerals disc. So, a disc hitting the board. Ah, this is tough for John, you know. It's difficult to deal with those Setch Trolls. Are we going to see a Shatter here? No. Ooh, is he going to flip again? He missed a flip in game one. Second flip. Oh, is he going to hit it? Oh, man. Second flip. Oh, now it's a hit. Okay, that's good, John. That is good. You don't want to... If you keep missing, if you miss twice in the finals, it becomes a thing, right? But now... That one miss was just a hiccup. Attacking here for four, by the way. So, uh, bus dropping to 16. There's the attack for three. John dropping to 12. Let's see what bus can do. Does he have an answer for the Sengir? Going to tap three. Oh, there's another Satch. Well, it's, it's, in a way, it is an answer. Because now John will probably have to keep his own uh, Sengir Vampire untapped to block the Setches uh, from Boss. Oh, there's another Setch. Actually, perfect. What he needs now, of course, is a land drop. Looks like he doesn't. So he's probably not going to attack. Passing the turn back to Boss. Boss is going to untap, upkeep, draw. I think if you're a boss, it's very tempting to attack right now. Especially, I mean, if he has a chain or a bolt, of course you're going to attack. Look at that. It's going to put them in the red zone. Doesn't even need a second to think about this. The Setch, of course, for, for John, is not very useful because he doesn't have a black to regenerate it. There's a block on one of the two Setches. So that Setch is getting regenerated and he takes three from the other. Going to drop to nine. So John is getting pretty low. There's a Badlands being played out and a pass turn. And here it uh, looks like we've got a little glitch and we're back. Let's see, did anything change? It looks like John has started his turn, played out a land, which is the Badlands. And now he has to make the decision, deciding not to attack, which makes sense because he, he's so low. Eh? He's on nine. Passing the turn here back to boss. And also for boss, oh, he is attacking with both. I won't say there's not really a favorable attack, but he is attacking. So, of course, John, Setch on Setch, both regenerate, and the other Setch on a Vampire. Wonder if we're going to see a chain or a bolt here on the Sengir. Or was it just a bluff? It's going to tap the one. Connection not ideal for boss, but at least we can see what he's doing. So he is playing here the Chain Lightning on the Sengir Vampire. And now it's, of course, up to John to decide, do I want to send it back? He could send it back, but then Bus can send it back, deal three to the Dome. So I think if you're John, you probably don't want to send it back. And it looks like Bus had just passed a turn, so John didn't send it back. And it's looking very good for Boss here after taking care of the Sengir Vampire. Okay, John finding a second one. That was pretty important for him. And attacking here. I think this is a good decision by, by John because you know that next turn you're not going to use it as a blocker because you don't have the mana to regenerate. Then just attack for three, right? Or else you're wasting three damage. So uh, Boss here on 13. And if you're boss, of course, you're going to turn them sideways. Exactly. You regenerate the one that's being blocked by the uh, Sengir taking three. John dropping to six. And there we see a Bolt. Uh-oh. Bolt taking care of the Sengir. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for, for John that Bus keeps having those Bolts to kill the Sengir. And, you know, he has to block. He's too low. He cannot just keep taking the damage. And now John again has to find a way to deal with that second Setch. And I mean, the Terror would be so good right now. If he has it in hand, he's probably going to keep it uh, to play during the combat of Boss because it's an instant, of course. He is playing a potential blocker, the Mistress Factory. 
Now remember, uh, the turning comes into play, it's still a summoning sickness, so it cannot pump itself. And we see John here kind of counting. Ooh, it looks like he is going to attack. Wow. That is a gutsy move. So he's going to probably put Buster on 10. Exactly. He's going to tap 5. What is he going to do for 5? Ooh, he's going to play a Drain Life. So he's going to play a Drain Life for 3, which means he goes up to 9. On the life total of Bus, Bus is going to 7, passing the turn. I mean, I like this play of John because you got to play towards your outs. If you play it safe, you know you're going to die. And he just hopes that Bus doesn't have another bolt or a chain, you know, because now, of course, Bus can swing in for 6, put John on 3. But it's also risky for Bus because if he does, he's kind of opening up and John can attack him for 5. So it's not as cut and dry as you may think. This is really tough for, uh, for Bus. You're making the decision, deciding not to attack. Whoa, look at that. So John really made a good decision here. John on 9, Bus on 7. Quite an exciting uh, second game here. Two cards in hand for John. Looks like he doesn't really have a good attack here. And this shows how good, of course, the drain life is, right? Okay, he's going to tap 4. What is he going to do for 4? There's a Nevin Earl's disc. So playing the disc. And I mean, the good thing about the disc is that if you pop it, yes, of course, Bus can regenerate the sedges, but when you regenerate, the sedge taps itself. So if you do it on end step of Bus, it's a way to tap down his creatures, and then you can attack. So even though at this board, it cannot kill the creatures of Bus or any other permanent, it still can be useful. And again, he's offering this opening to Bus, which is not really great because he can attack with both sedges. You know, put John on six, but that's not going to help much. It looks like, by the way, that perhaps... No, we don't have... It looks like, kind of like we had a glitch, but maybe we don't. The connection of Bus is not perfect, but we'll make do. I'll keep you up to date uh, attacking here with one sedge. Interesting. Why one sedge? Very interesting. So I think if you're John, you just block Setch on Setch, right? So he is going to block Regenerate. So Bus will block and Regenerate. Does that mean that he's got a double bolt to kill the Setch? But if he does, why not just play directly on John's life total? Passing the turn here. Interesting move to just attack with the one. Now it's up to John to make a decision again. Gonna tap two here. Okay, there's a him to Turek. So Boss is gonna lose the last two cards. Oh man, we can we can't really see what it is. I think I land in another card. Connection is failing a little bit on us, but what a thrilling game number two nonetheless. There's a pass turn. I think that John really has good the good cards here because he can do that trick where he forces uh, Boss to tap out. Don't think he's going to do it right now. You want to do it at a point where uh, you can attack for lethal. Is that a factory there? Mistress factory for Bus? I think it is. It's a little bit difficult to see. I think it's a Mistress factory. Pass to turn back to John. Two cards in hand for him. Tapping five, another Sengir perhaps. That would be really good. If this is another Sengir. Oh, another Sengir Vampire. Yeah, this could, this could be game, I think. Well, I, I mean, it still takes two more turns, but... This Sengir flies over the sedges, and Bus has two turns to find a solution, and this is turn number one. Needs to find it from the top of his deck. Can he find an answer for the Sengir? Or is John going to win X points? Finals, 41! Of course, Bus in the tank here, struggling to survive, already a game behind, needs to win this. Gonna tap to... Oh, is that a terror? I think it is. On the sedge, of course, because you cannot target a black creature with it. 
What can he do then? I mean, I think I would attack her with double Sedge. Right? Because he can only block one with the Vampire. And you have your factory to block the factory of uh, of John. Exactly. Go in there. Go into the red zone. Blocking one. John taking three. He's on six. Regenerating, of course, his set, passing the turn. So now John can swing in for four. Put him on three. Does he have a bolt? A fireball. Oh, man. I, oh, I almost feel sorry that there's that fireball. I wanted to see the next turn where then boss would probably have to do like an all in attack and John will be forced to do the, uh, to pop the Nevernal disc, but what an entertaining game too. Thank you, Buss and John for this great matchup. And uh, as always, you guys build great decks and are great players. Thank you so much for showing your skills here on the show. And here we see the winning deck of John Dittert, a true classic black and red. And I've just called it mid range because I don't know, what would you call it? Let me know what's a good name for this classic deck. Let me know in the, in the comments below and uh, for now thank you very much for watching and before you go please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and um, you can also become of course a patron of the show like i mentioned at the introduction of this video check out patreon.com slash timmy talks to find out how you can support the channel financially and help me to keep this channel uh afloat and the nice thing is if you become a patron at the two dollar level your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video what end scroll this end scroll Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!